Did you know that two out of every three guys are going to experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Well, I knew it for me, it was more like 25. Look, I wish Keeps had been around when I was younger because advancements to science have now meant that there are treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss and help you keep the hair that you have. Look, it's too late for me. My hair is gone and Keeps cannot bring it back. But you don't have to be like me. You can stop your hair loss early thanks to Keeps. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved drugs for treating hair loss. So you might have tried them before, but never at a price this low. That's right, if you were thinking, <laughs> Some sort of medicine, so it's gonna be expensive. Well, you couldn't be more wrong. Keep starts at just $10 a month. How's it work? Well, for one thing, no need to visit a doctor's office. Just schedule a quick online console a little bit later. Discreet package arrives at your door. Use it in the privacy of your own home. Beautiful. Like the hair. You will soon be keeping. So if you're noticing that you're losing your hair, that's one problem that's not gonna fix itself. I can promise you that. It won't. Do something about it. For a limited time, go to keeps.com forward slash megaprojects or click the link in the description below to get 50% off your first order. And now today's video. In March of 1971, 17 and 41 Walker Bulldog light tanks of the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, ARVN, crossed into neighboring Laos. Tasked with disrupting supply lines that had been funneling men and material to the NVA and the Viet Cong, the Bulldogs spearheaded a potent fighting force consisting of airborne infantry, armored personnel carriers, and helicopter gunships. In the early going, the offensive met with little resistance, but that changed when oh, more than two dozen Soviet-built North Vietnamese T-54 main battle tanks and P T-76 light amphibious tanks were encountered. Within seconds, heavy machine guns on both sides erupted from just a few hundred yards away, marking the start of the war's first large-scale armored engagement. Amidst deafening cracks and blinding muzzle flashes, harried crews sent high-explosive and armor-piercing shells hurtling toward their adversaries. And by the time the smoke had cleared, less than 20 minutes later, 6 T-54s and 17 PT-76s had been destroyed. On the South Vietnamese side, 25 armored personnel carriers and 5 M41s lay in ruins. Of these, about half had been taken out by the heavier T-54s, while the rest had fallen victim to landmines and RPGs fired from relatively close ranges. But despite disadvantages in weight, armor, and firepower, the Bulldogs held their own. That said, these inherent weaknesses meant that in future close quarter slugfest, Bulldogs probably wouldn't fare so well against more potent machines. As such, for the remainder of the operation, M41s were largely relegated to static defensive positions. But though this tactic kept them out of harm's way, it negated the Bulldogs' two big advantages – speed and cross-country mobility. Though it's unclear how many M41s were in Laos in 1971, over the following months, more than four dozen more were destroyed before the remnants of the original force limped back into Vietnam. Known officially as the 76mm gun tank M41, the Walker Bulldog was originally conceived to carry out infantry support and armed reconnaissance missions. Designed to capitalize on speed, Bulldogs were never intended to duke it out with main battle tanks like they did in Laos. Named after four-star General Walton Walker, who served in the First and Second World Wars in Korea, Bulldogs were fast, reliable, and packed big punches for their size. Development began in 1976, when the US Army began looking for a replacement for the obsolete M24 Chaffees. Originally designated T-37 and later T-41E, the new light tanks were fully funded by Congress in 1949, and less than a year later, the first three prototypes rolled off the assembly line at Cadillac's Cleveland tank plant in Ohio. To reduce costs and speed up production whenever possible, all M41 variants would utilize existing auto parts and components already being used in other military vehicles. In addition, the hulls, chassis, and suspensions would be standardized, making them suitable for additional armored vehicles like M42 Dusters, M44, and M52 self-propelled howitzers and M75 armored personnel carriers, all of which were also produced by Cadillac. Likewise, each of the vehicles would use one of two pre-selected power plants manufactured by Lycoming or Continental, both of which were six-cylinder gasoline engines that produced between 400 
and 500 horsepower. Shortly after the first production Bulldog was delivered in March of 1951, President Harry S. Truman visited the Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland to see the new tank in action. Impressed by its mobility and firepower, production was ramped up, and by the spring of 1952, more than 900 units had been built. Despite their impressive performance, the new tanks weren't a top priority for the Army, but with the outbreak of hostilities on the Korean Peninsula, the demand for armored vehicles of all shapes and sizes increased drastically. As a result, the newly designed M41s were rushed into production sooner than intended, and this hassle led to a number of manufacturing and technical issues. So many, in fact, that thousands of design changes were requested by the US Army in the first year of production alone. Many of these issues were ultimately addressed, but M41s were never particularly popular with American servicemen. As early as the summer of 1952, the US government had become so disillusioned with the M41's shortcomings that it recommended that the program be cancelled sold altogether. According to the army, bulldogs were too tall, they were too heavy, they were too thinly armored. But though the army called for an entirely new light tank program, by 1954 more than 5,000 units have been produced. Approximately 90 feet long, 9 feet tall, and tipping the scales at more than 50,000 pounds, M41s were big. But though their silhouettes were similar to those of the M48 and M60 tanks that ultimately replaced them, they were far lighter. Crewed by a commander, gunner, loader, and driver, engines and transmissions were located behind blast-proof bulkheads to the aft of the crew compartment. Regardless of variant, all vehicles built on the M41 chassis had five road wheels, torsion bar suspensions, and elevated final drive sprockets positioned at the rear. M41s weren't technically amphibious, but they could cross streams and rivers up to 40 inches, that's one meter deep, and those twice as deep with the addition of extra equipment like intake and exhaust snorkels. While their hulls were welded plates, M41s had cast turrets that could make one powered 360-degree traverse in about 10 seconds. Armor was just one inch thick on the front of the turret, and glasses plate, and even thinner on the sides, top, and rear. By comparison, early M60 tanks had about seven inches of armor on the fronts of their turrets, and this increased to nearly 11 inches on later variants. As a result, M41s and their crews were susceptible to everything from mines and small caliber cannons to RPGs and Soviet 100mm D10 tank guns, the latter of which could punch through the Bulldog's armor from as far as 10,000 yards. Power came from an 895 cubic inch supercharged air-cooled six-cylinder gasoline engine that produced 500 horsepower and 950 pound-feet of torque, enough to propel Bulldogs to maximum road speeds of 45 miles per hour. Range was about 100 miles, and the tank's combination of low weight and high horsepower with rugged suspensions gave them exceptional mobility. But on the downside, in combat situations, gasoline was far more likely to ignite than diesel fuel. At least unofficially, crews were taught to abandon their bulldogs whenever a fire was even a remote possibility. Early M41s were equipped with 76mm M32 cannons, while later variants got M32A1s with higher muzzle velocities. Regardless of variant, Bulldogs could generally carry 65 rounds of ammunition, and to tame their ample kick, each cannon was equipped with hydro spring recoil dampeners and fume extractors, which vented exhaust gases after each firing. Range calculations were done manually, and aim was taken through the gunner's M97A1 telescopic sight. Muzzle velocity with armor piercing ammunition was about 2,400. 400 feet per second, and the maximum effective range of direct fire was approximately 4,000 meters. M41s were also equipped with defensive 30 caliber machine guns mounted coaxially to the left of the main gun, and those built for the US Army had 50 caliber machine guns mounted ahead of the commander's hatch on top of the turret. Collectively, more than 6,000 rounds of machine gun ammunition could be stored internally and externally. The first production M41s were delivered to the US Army, but hundreds more were shipped to West Germany for service with the Bundeswehr. Generally, each armored division included one company of M41s, but in post-war Germany, the light tank concept was even less popular than it was in the United States, largely because the Soviet Union was busy producing thousands of heavy main battle tanks against which M41s would have stood basically no chance. Some M41s became dedicated tank destroyers, but most served as fast reconnaissance vehicles, and by the mid 60s, 
1960s, nearly all of the Bundeswehr's bulldogs had been relegated to training duties to make way for American M48s and domestically produced Leopard 1. But though bulldogs never saw action in Europe, in 1958 more than four dozen were sold to the Lebanese army as replacements for their vintage World War II Sherman Fireflies and French H-35s. The Lebanese army used its new bulldogs during the Civil War between 1975 and 1990, and many fell into the hands of various Christian and Muslim factions operating in and around Beirut. Then, M41s were pressed into service during the disastrous Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba in mid-April of 1961. Financed and coordinated by the CIA, at least five M41s were procured to secure the beachhead and defend ground forces against Soviet-supplied T-35-85 medium tanks. Cuban crews received clandestine training at Fort Knox in the months prior to the invasion, where they learned the basics of tanking skills like gunnery, driving, navigation, and field maintenance. The Bulldogs were transported by landing craft from larger vessels in the Gulf of Mexico and came ashore at Playa Giron along Cuba's south-central coast on April the 17th. Because air support was lacking, the landing craft and tanks took heavy fire, but the Bulldogs made it onto the beach intact and immediately proceeded to attack and secure the local airstrip. The Cuban forces that had been tasked with defending the airstrip lacked armor and anti-tank weapons, but since the force came ashore at Plague Iran was equipped with tanks, Castro made its destruction a top priority. After a multi-hour artillery barrage, 15 T-34-85 tanks were ordered to retake the airfield and beachhead. As they advanced within a few hundred yards, the well-concealed M41s opened fire, initially taking out the first and last tanks, thereby bottling the rest in. The M41 crews wiped out nearly a third of the T-34-85s before those that remained were able to retreat, but the success was short-lived. After regrouping and bolstering their numbers later that afternoon, Castro's forces counterattacked and quickly regained the upper hands. Running dangerously low on fuel and ammunition, most of the M41s were simply abandoned. Bulldogs also saw significant action with the Army of the Republic of Vietnam's fledgling armored corps. During the war's early stages, ARVN's armored forces were ill-equipped and ill-trained, but with the formation of the Military Assistance Command Vietnam in 1962, U.S. support grew, and in addition to getting new equipment, South Vietnamese units were reorganized to mimic their American counterparts. By the spring of 1965, most armored units had received M41A3s and the ARVN's old M24 Chaffee and M5 Stuart light tanks were relegated to static artillery and base security duties. The new light tanks were far more popular with the South Vietnamese than with American crews, largely because the former were generally smaller in stature, which meant that they could work more comfortably and efficiently inside the cramped interiors. ARVN M41s were first thrust into combat in 1966 during the Buddhist uprising in central Vietnam. At the time, the region was a hotbed of anti-American fervor, much of which resulted from the brutality, corruption, and the ineptness exhibited by the country's ruling puppet regime. The ARVN's new M41s performed well supporting the infantry in urban fighting in and around Da Nang, but dozens were lost to mines and RPGs. By 1972, the number of M41s in service with the ARVN had swelled to nearly 600, but due to heavy losses, most were replaced by M48s. Approximately 100 M41s soldiered on, but during the 1975 Spring Offensive, most were destroyed, captured, or abandoned by their crews as the situation continued to deteriorate. Of those that were abandoned in working order, most were commandeered by the NVA and Viet Cong and used during the final push on Saigon. After the war in Southeast Asia, nearly 100 Bulldogs of unknown origin ended up in service with the South African Defense Force SADF, in the late 1970s. Because the United Nations Security Council had imposed an arms embargo on South Africa, the presence of American tanks there aroused international interest. In addition to enforcing martial law and the tenets of apartheid, many M41s were apparently used in Operation Savannah, during which the SADF crossed into neighboring Angola to drive out Soviet-trained Cuban-led forces intent on destabilizing the region. Under questioning by the U.S. House of Representatives African Subcommittee, State Department officials did admit to sending a few bulldogs to South Africa for testing and evaluation, but claimed to have done so decades before the imposition of the embargo. Regardless of how they got there as late as the early 1980s, the Angolan government claimed that South African M41s routinely violated its sovereign territory. These days, most M41s are long gone. However, in the early 2000s, as many as 400 well-maintained and heavily upgraded A3 variants were in service with the Army of the Republic of China, which, to be clear, is the name of Taiwan's army. In recent years, many have been replaced by newer, heavier, and more powerful tanks like M60s, most of which have received significant aftermarket upgrades to their engines, armor, cannons, and 
fire control systems. If things continue to heat up between China and Taiwan, it's likely that various American tanks from the past will play significant roles in that conflict. As America's first light tank after the Second World War, Cadillac produced nearly 5,500 M41s between 1951 and 1954. But though they served with the armies of Saudi Arabia, Denmark, Ethiopia, and Uruguay, to name just a few, they weren't generally liked by their crews. With the introduction of heavier and more powerful main battle tanks on both sides of the Iron Curtain, M41s were no longer considered fit for frontline service, even in the reconnaissance roles for which they'd been built. In the end, their international popularity may have had less to do with their combat effectiveness and more to do with their bargain basement pricing, about $500,000 a pop in today's money. Yet despite falling out of favor due to inherent inadequacies, the light tank concept just would not die. In America, M41s were replaced by M551 Sheridans, which were specifically designed to be airdropped to support ground troops deployed ahead of larger fighting forces. But ironically, Sheridans had equally thin armor and effective cannons and were far more prone to mechanical breakdowns, all of which made them even less popular than the Bulldogs that they were replacing.